Why don't we just let's dye some leather? Have at it and dye some leather. Um, you may notice <laughs> uh, we're uh, we're gloved up. We're here. wearing some protection here <laughs> just to be on the safe side. Um, because if you don't, your fingers might look just the same afterwards anyway. Yeah. And it grows out after a while as your skin regrows. It does not wash <laughs> out. It does not wash out. So uh, be careful. Hey guys, we've got Reiner here from Rinia. Um, where we've been going over some of the uh, products that we offer, well, really all the products that we offer here at Springfield Leather. Um, and now we are going to talk about a very exciting uh, new product that is kind of new to the homemaker industry, but something that they have been selling for a very, very, very long time. Um, and this is their black dye. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, it's That's actually kind of funny because... I, I mean, I do a little bit of leather work, not a lot. And when I dye something black, I use this. And I always thought, well, dyeing stuff black is easy. It's the <laughs> easiest color you can work with. It's just black. But then I came over here and people told me, no, it's the other way around. Black yeah. is difficult. And I said, no, it's not. <laughs> so I said, I was, you don't have the right product. Turns out I was cheating. I was using this. <laughs> so uh, why not bring it over here? Yeah. So what makes this different from the black dyes that we mm -hmm. use? So generally, um, generally speaking, all the dyes, and not, not just the black dyes, mm -hmm. but pretty much all the dyes that are available in, in this industry, they're all pigment-based. Uh -huh. So it's, it's either individual color pigments or a mixture of pigments suspended in alcohol, solvent, water, whatever, and then they go onto the leather, the, uh, the carrier goes in, but the pigments mostly stay on the surface. Right. And... Uh, that works, yes, but it comes with certain downsides, like they can rub off, they can bleed out, um, they don't penetrate as much as you want them to. Mm -hmm. And that is the difference. In this case, we are talking about a liquid black substance okay. that's in there, a liquid black chemical. And that goes into the fiber that can actually penetrate the leather, the surface, or even the whole thing if you, if you dip it. So... That also means that it stays there. Mm -hmm. It penetrates the fiber, it goes in there, it stays there. It cannot be washed out. Of course, if you put in too much, then the excess will go out. But right. that is basically part of the process. You put it on and then you buff off the excess, yes. basically, and then you're done. Right? Yeah. You don't even need a finish on top of that because all the finish... I mean, you, you can put one on, certainly. But what the finish does mostly is protect the color. Right. In this case, it doesn't need protection. It's just there. It doesn't There's no pigment or... sitting on top. Right, right. So uh, <clears throat> that's uh, what we do there. So um, I've looked around, and as far as I'm aware, we're the only one making something. Uh, the only ones making something like this. Um, it's not a new process. We've been doing this for decades. <laughs> so it's actually one of the oldest products we've uh, we've made. We make. Um, and like I said, this is an actual pure black, and that's why we call it. This is still the German label, but the, the name over here will be Absolute Black. So like right. black, 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 nothing but. Uh, <clears throat> many blacks, other black dyes out there, they're actually more like a mixture of pigments. Okay. Because if you, if you mix all the colors together, what do you get? You get black. Right. Um, and that is also the reason why, if you dye something black with those products, you might end up with something that looks a little greenish, a little purple. purplish, yeah. or whatever, a bit gray, silver, whatever. Just not what you were looking for. But what do you want if you dye something black? Right. You want it to look black. <laughs> That's kind of the point that we have here. Um, we have a little bit of a Ford Model T approach with this. Okay. You can have it in any color, it's just going to be black. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're and I'm, I don't want to make any promises here that I can't keep. Um, <clears throat> out of the thirty people that work for us in in our factory in Cologne, we have four chemists in the lab. Mm -hmm. And um, when I learned about this, that this was an actual thing over here or in this industry that yeah. would be interesting. Um, Everybody's like, "What well, are the colors?" Right, especially so, our my boss. It's like colors. Yeah, and, and, and I, I see where this is coming from. It makes sense, absolutely. Um, so that is something we are currently looking at. No guarantees. 
but we are, it, it's a project. It's an ongoing The really project. smart people are working on it. So we'll see if right. they come up with something. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> if it can be done, we'll, we'll try our best. Yeah. But for now, we have the black and uh, we'll, we'll go with that. So um, generally speaking, what does this work on? So I would say pretty much any leather. Um, it has to be able to get into the fiber. Right. So if you have a finish on there that prevents that, like a water repellent finish mm -hmm. or whatever, yeah, like a lacquer or something, yeah. uh, it's not going to go through that necessarily. In, in some cases, it even might. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> generally speaking, as with any product you're not familiar with, try it on some scraps, see what it does for you, see if it works. If it doesn't, in this case, you might need to deglaze that leather. Right. Clean it a little bit. Um, there's <clears throat> there's different options: soap and water, acetone. It really depends what you what you want to do there and what you can expose that material to. Yeah. Um, of course, if you want to dye it black anyway, you don't have to worry about colors washing out. But uh, you don't want to use anything, for instance, that makes the leather brittle or yeah, weaken it or something like bleach or something. Not not a good idea. Don't do that. Um, <clears throat> don't, bleach, don't bleach your leather. Nope. Yep. Well, actually, going down in color and making something darker, that's possible. Making something lighter, that's yeah. difficult. Yeah. We have people all the time that come in and they're like, oh, I want to take my navy shoes and make them tan. And we're just like, no, you can't. You don't get to do that. Well, we can sell you some tan leather that you can do on top of it. But, uh, right. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. All right. <clears throat> so you can use it on the surface. You can mm -hmm. use it on edges. So... Uh, just give you some examples here. So this is a little holster. And it's it's just a demo piece. It's nothing fancy. But this is one coat of this black dye. That's pretty amazing. No finish on top. Just no finish. Just and, left. And to make it even crazier, this was put on. It went into the water and it buffed a little bit. Mm -hmm. Went into the water half an hour later for wet molding. Didn't come out. And there's no dye bleed on right? the... On the other side. Right. That's incredible. Like where it's supposed to be. Um, it works on edges. Mm -hmm. It works over typical edging, burnishing agents, as yeah. I would call them. So uh, saddle soap, tokenol, anything like that. Um, of course, if you put like an edge paint on there. Right. Well, that, that's a whole different whole different thing because that's like a polyurethane or something. Yeah. Like that, that's, but that is already black or the color you wanted. Right. That's not what you would dye through. But uh, yeah, pretty much anything else. You can use it on on crust leathers, for instance. I mean, to give it an original color. I mean, this was black to begin with. Yeah. But uh, you can use it on batch tan, on chrome tan, on oil tan, on exotics, on on suede. Um, <clears throat> although on really thin materials, it might actually penetrate. So uh, put it on one side; it might actually go through which is something to keep in mind right? if you want to do that. Just know that it's that's probably going to happen. Right. And this is suede, yeah. so there wasn't like a grain side to really right. <clears throat> keep the, the dye in. It just went all the way yeah. through. But, I mean, that, that is what we're looking for here. Mm -hmm. we, we have very strong penetration power, yeah. and that's what's going to happen. So why don't we just... Let's dye some leather. ...have at it and dye some leather. Um, you may notice... <laughs> uh, we're uh, we're gloved up. We're here. wearing some protection here <laughs> just to be on the safe side, um, because if you don't, your fingers might look just the same afterwards anyway. Yeah. And it grows out after a while as your skin regrows. It does not wash <laughs> out. It does not wash out. So uh, be careful. Now, um, in this case, I'm just I'm just using a dauber. You can use a brush or. I know some people that spray it, mm -hmm. which be very, very, very careful. The stuff is highly flammable. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that's, you probably want to wear some ventilation if you're spraying. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I mean, this is an industry application. Yeah. Um, the funny thing is you can use this to dye adhesive. So oh. if you have a project, let's say, I don't know, black shoes. Yeah. You know, shoes for uh, I don't know, army boots, black army boots. And you want to have a black glue line on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that so that your glue line doesn't show up. You can mix some of this into our adhesives. And Interesting. you have a black adhesive. I wouldn't use it on aquilum, wouldn't work, but on the solvent based adhesives not a problem at all. Okay. It's uh so it's just 
But no sheen. Nope. Just straight black. Yep. So what I'm going to do, I'm going <clears> to <throat> put this on some different materials as well. But in general, um, I'm going to let this dry. Okay. And then I'm going to buff it. Make sure that the excess comes out mm -hmm. and comes out now before it's. I mean, if if there is more in there than what the fibers can absorb, it will come out because right. where where should it go? So that is something to keep in mind, especially with the items that are going to be worn or going to be in contact with anything else. Uh, buff it until nothing comes out. Sure. To make sure that all the excess is out. Okay. I think this is our bootstrap leather here that we just dyed. Mm -hmm. So we've got, and we didn't do anything to it. It's right. just the oil tan as we had it. Right. And depending on... Uh, the finish, you might, like I said, you might want to deglaze this first. Mm -hmm. um, this can be applied while the leather, if you do this with, for instance, soap water, while the leather is still a little bit wet, mm -hmm. that gives it even better penetration powers, gets okay. it even deeper into the material. So that's another option. The original purpose of this was to uh, yeah, basically re-dye shoes. So let's say you had a pair of brown shoes, but you went to a wedding and needed a pair of black shoes. So... We're talking 1950s, 1960s here. Oh, I can't afford a new pair of shoes, so let's just dye the one pair that I have black. Right. And that's what it did. That's what it was for. So, uh, yeah. should, should I tell the I mean, story where this originally was? I think that it's interesting. <laughs> a little, little historical uh, fact here. So let's see. This is the, the, the suede application. And as you, I mean, as I said, it, it, it does penetrate. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> on thin materials like this, something to keep to keep in mind. Um, <clears throat> with any product, I'm going to repeat that same advice, before you use it on something that you care about, use it on something you don't care about. <laughs> <laughs> use it on scraps, try it out, see if it works for you, yeah. and then go from there. So, like I said, we would just buff it a little bit. Man, um, it's time to write up. Yeah. You can use some, and you see how little, how little comes out there. Yeah, just, just a bit. And most of that, that's in there. So... You can. There's like hardly any. Right. If you guys, if if you've ever dyed something black and then buffed it, now this is just Herman Oak Veg. Yeah. So I mean, it, it was ready to accept dye, but that yeah. is all that you're getting yeah. off. Right. On a on a finished surface, mm -hmm. you might get some some more. Yeah. Like we'll see. Like this one is you you can see that it still yeah. has some sitting. There's, on there's top. more there's more sitting on top. So yeah. with this leather here, I if I did this again, I might probably try to sort of deglaze it, it a little bit first to make it more receptive. And then while it's still a little bit moist, just, just get it back in no, there. That's really awesome. And I, like, especially, you know, a lot of our, our customers are holster or mm. sheath makers or belt makers. Mm, um, right. You know, people that want a good black. Right. It's a highly used item. Mm. There's, you know, like a lot of physical contact. Yep. And, and a lot of times the black that we currently have will just wear down mm. over time. So you started out with this item that was black. Um, and right. then you end up with something that's kind of like this, like weird gray mm -hmm. brown color right. um, over time. Um, and so this is just a really cool product, especially being able just to to wet mold it after mm. you're done, finish the right. edges. It's kind of just that all in one mm. and it doesn't leach out. Exactly. Um, so super cool. Um, if you watch this way in the future, um, it will be a product that you can just buy. But if you do watch this right after we release it and it is the 13th of 14th of August, I think. 14th of August. 14th, yeah. Yeah, 14th of August, 2023. Um, you can you can pre-order it. Um, right now, uh, you said that the, the inventory should be in the U.S. around the end of August. Yep. And so I think we have it, you know, and if you go to the website and you type in Absolute Black, you'll get this item. You can, you can put it on pre-order and then we will ship it as soon as it's here and ready. Okay. So. Yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> Very awesome. Right. All right. Well, anything else on the black? No, I think we're, we covered all the, the angles, I guess. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much, guys. Um, well, that was the end, so I don't know what to say now.